All right, welcome uh, to my class on uh, Introduction to Italian Longsword, in particular Fiore's plays. Uh, this class was originally taught at Atlantean University in June of two, 2022, but was not recorded at the time. I'm now going back and recording it so that other people can enjoy the class. Uh, my name is Master Lloyd Eldred in the SCA. Uh, my websites are baronlloyd.org and learnfiore.org, and there's my email address if you want to contact me. Uh, my sources. Um, we are going to be working from the Getty Museum's uh, manuscript uh, copy of uh, Fiore's manual. There's a link to uh, uh, that uh, manual. Uh, they have it in very high resolution uh, uh, facsimiles that you can download. Uh, and then I, I downloaded those and then cropped them close so that you can see the, the, the detail of the plays that's being described. I'm using a translation by Colin Hatcher, which is from his manual, his book, uh, The Flower of Battle, available on uh, Amazon. Uh, or you can uh, access the translation on wiktenauer.com. So quick background on Fiori. It's a uh, circa 1409 publication. It is the earliest known com complete co European combat system. Um, unlike the a couple of earlier published um, manuals that focused on a single weapon, uh, he has sections that uh, include wrestling, dagger, swords, armored combat, pikes, spears, and mounted combat. Four copies of the manual are known to, to survive. Uh, each one is different because it's pre-printing press. The Getty copy is the most complete, and it's the one that I'm going to be using for this talk. Uh, the page numbering that you'll see on the slides um, is a museum-style page numbering where each sheet of paper or vellum is numbered. The front of the sheet is called recto or abbreviated R, and the back of each sheet is uh, called verso or abbreviated V. Um, and the master is indicated uh, on a on a plate wearing a gold coronet or crown, uh, and that is uh, to um, introduce a concept and then follow on variations on that concept and depict a scholar who is uh, indicated by having a gold garter. So I have um, several related YouTube videos available on the YouTube channel. There's a playlist uh, with some fundamentals on holding the sword, stance, cuts, footworks, available at uh, the link provided, and some uh, related videos on using Fiori in the SCA are also available on the second playlist. And um, you can get these slides from the learnfiori.org website, uh, link in the description below. So uh, this, this class is uh, talking about Fiori's plays for SCA combat. Uh, it covers a sampling of plays from across Fiore's manual, including plays from uh, sword in two hands, long range, sword in two hands, short range, sword in one hand, and armored sword. I've previously taught classes on three of the four of those with videos available here on YouTube for those three um, that, that will cover the plays I, cover, I, I have in this class, plus a lot more. So if there's uh, a particular section that interests you, uh, you can go and watch uh, the more detailed um, videos. Uh, and these plays are chosen to be usable in many SCA combat forms with limited modification and fun. So this is this class is kind of a best of trying to get you interested in Fiori and show you some things that you can actually use with a little bit of modification on the SCA combat field. Uh, and then hopefully we'll get you interested in looking in them into Fiori more. So the first plate I want to talk about uh, is uh, from the Sword in Two Hands at Long Range, and it is um, the first Remini Master. Here begins the wide play of the Sword in Two Hands. This master who is crossed at the point of his sword with his player says, when I am crossed at the points, I quickly switch my sword to the other side and strike him from that side with a downward blow to his hands or his arms, his head or his arms. Alternatively, I will place a thrust into his face, as the next picture will show. Now, Fiori doesn't explicitly say it, but uh, to me, it makes sense that uh, if you are winning the bind, if you, when your swords are crossed, if you have access uh, to, to easily extend into his hands or face, that's what you do. And if you are losing the bind where um, the, the swords are in a position that you can't extend into the person's hands or face, then you disengage by switching to the other side, and then you have access to his hands or his face. So here's us doing this play. Uh, I'm on the left wearing the uh, floppy hat and the COVID mask because that was when we filmed these 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 videos. Um, and the floppy hat represents the uh, the coronet in the uh, original plate. 
And you can see that that was a disengage and it, to uh, both the, the hands and the head. Plate two, uh, the student, um, is the the strong side of this. I have placed a thrust into his face, as the previous master said. Also, I could have done what he told you, that is, when my sword was crossed to the right, I could have quickly switched sides to the left, striking his head or arms with a downward blow. And here is me doing, doing that version of the play where I was winning the bind, and I just extend and take his hands or his face. The next plate uh, is the second student. My my master previously instructed me that when I am crossed at mid, mid swords with my opponent, I should immediately advance forward and seize his sword as shown and then strike him with a cut or thrust. Also, I could destroy his legs as you'll see drawn next by stopping with my foot against the side of his knee or under the kneecap. So here is us doing that play. He's crossed, I step in and stab him or cut him or whatever I want to do. We will not be doing the leg kick in this class. It is included in the, the long range class. Um, if you want to look at that video, then we'll skip ahead a little bit to my, my next favorite play, which is called the uh, peasants blow or strike. Uh, depending on which translation, they'll use the word blow or strike. Uh, this play is called the peasant strike, and you will do it like this. Take a narrow stance with your left foot forward and wait for the peasant to attack first with his sword. When he launches his attack, immediately advance your left foot to the left offline. Step diagonally off the line to the left with your right foot, receiving a sword in the middle of your sword. Now, let his sword slide off yours to the ground and then quickly counterattack with a downward strike to his head or arms or a thrust to his chest, as you see drawn in the next picture. This is also a good play if you are fighting sword versus poleaxe or against heavy or light staff. In this case, I'll be doing um, a downward strike to the back of the person's arms, uh, head, sorry. So here's the play. There's the picture again. Here's the play. He comes at me. I deflect let him go to the ground and then cut his head off from the back. We'll show it again, deflect, and cut to the back of the head. So in this case, I'm gonna show you uh, Fiori's counter to that play and the counter to the counter. Um, and I want to note while we're here, the really cool hat that the master has on the left. In the previous drawing, you saw the peasant strike in which you saw a thrust well-placed in the attacker's chest, or in this case, a cut. And alternatively, he could have struck a downward blow to the opponent's head or to the arms, as I explained previously. Also, if the opponent seeks to counter me by striking back up with a rising blow to my arms from the left, I quickly advance my left foot and place my sword over his, and from this position, he can do nothing to me. So we'll show both this counter where, where the, uh, the initial attacker uh, uh, counter cuts uh, as soon as the sword is released and the uh, and then the counter to that counter where the the cover is uh, restored so here's that play uh, my partner on the right is going to start with the, pe the peasant strike i'm going to deflect and then we'll show both the 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 response cut if i if he is alert and let's go and pays attention and then the cover where I stop him from doing that counter cut. I'm, a, I'm above his sword and can make him pay however I want. I'll show this again. He has a number of options for that counter cut. He could have used the false edge, used the true edge there, that cover, and cut. All right, skipping ahead a little further. Still in the two hands with long, two handed sword at long range section. I have a play called the exchange of points or thrusts. Both words are used in translations. Um, this play is named the exchange of points and it is done like this. When your opponent thrusts at you, quickly advance your front foot off the line and with the other foot step to the side, also moving off the line, crossing his sword with your hands low and your point high into his face or chest, um, as you see drawn here. This is a common SCA rapier move actually. So um, if you're an SCA fencer, you should be familiar with this and we'll show you the depiction. He thrusts, I step offline and counter thrust. 
Really simple. All right. Um, we're going to skip ahead again to uh, plate seven, which is the 18th student, which is called the false thrust. Uh, this play is called the false point or the short point or the false thrust, and I will explain how to do it. I make it look like I'm making a powerful attack against my opponent with a crosswise strike to his head, and as he makes cover, I strike his sword, but only lightly. Then I quickly turn my sword to the other side of his blade, gripping my sword with my left hand at about mid-sword. From there, I can quickly place a thrust into his throat or chest. This play is, however, better in armor than without armor. So here is this play. So I fainted. I showed a strong, strong thrust. He brought up his, his sword to parry, and I quickly skipped around the sword. Um, not allowing it to stop, so his energy is away from me, and that allows me to, to sweep around and cut or thrust. In this case, a, a cut to the side of his head. Show it again. All right. And here's here's a, a play in the uh, Sword in Two Hands at short range section. I, I don't have a video for this, I don't think, but I will show you uh, just a picture. Uh, so this is the sixth student. This is the grip that the student um, before me said said to do to you. I can injure you without danger. I, I retain your sword's hilt. I will give you cuts and thrusts cheaply with no risk. And this play breaks all sword disarms and doing it immediately spoils the narrow play. So this is very quick. Um, you You transfer, you find his sword, you transfer it to your other hand. You send your sword, your arm over, under, and you grab his quillion. Now in the picture, I'm doing this, um, and instead of a, a sword, I'm actually holding my my cell phone in a selfie mode, um, which seems very uh, on brand for Fiori to uh, humiliate his opponent with a, a selfie, uh, memorializing um, his his winning of the play. Uh, I do not feel that you should do this play on an SCA field unless the per person you have. Uh, you are doing against is um, well versed in Fiori and knows that this is a possibility. It will upset marshals and may really upset your opponent. Um, if you want to do it to me on an SCA field, you are welcome to try. Uh, and I have told people um, that uh, the first couple people that are successful in doing this to me on an SCA battlefield, I will provide them with a frosty beverage uh, that is appropriate for their age and, and preferences. Um, in in celebration of their success. Uh, it could be a brew or it could be a soda or it could be ice water, whatever is available and, and fits your needs. Plate nine is from the sword in one hand section. So we're skipping uh, to another section. Um, I have done what my teacher uh, told me to do. That is to say, I've stepped off the line, making a strong cover. Having rendered my opponent unprotected, I now easily place a thrust into his face. And with my left hand, I demonstrate that I can take his sword and send it to the ground. So uh, in this case, he's starting from a, a refused position. You'll see it in the video in a moment. And, and making a, a sweeping cover uh, to end up in the position on the left. So uh, there's my starting position in the picture on the left. And then here's our interpretation of display. He thrusts, I make cover, and I um, transfer the cover to my hand, and that frees up the sword to thrust. I'll show it again. All right. Now we're going to move to the sword in armor section of the plate, of the manual for the next plate. Um, again, the master here is on the left, and he is half sorting. He's got a sword in, um, in both hands. Uh, this cover is made from the true cross guard when I step diagonally offline. And so that you can see what can be done from this cover, my students will show the plays that follow it. And since they are experienced in mortal combat, they will show these skills without he hesitation. And there's a picture of my son and I doing the play. And we'll show you the, the, the an actual play here. I am the first student of the master who came before me and I make this thrust from his cover. You should also know that you can make this thrust from the true cross guard and from the um, 
posto bastarda is what the the text says and that is translation translated is either bastard mixed or hybrid cross guard and as the opponent makes his thrust the master or his student who is waiting in one of one of these guards or positions keeps his body low and steps offline crossing the opponent's sword with his point high into the opponent's face or chest and with the hilt of his sword kept low as shown here uh, our video actually uh, takes place a little higher than than this is depicted but uh, you get the same effect show it to you again so i energy slide up and then i can thrust or cut uh depending on how close I am. So the picture on the right is a picture from uh, Atlanta's first uh, cut and thrust championships in the finals. And I use this play. You can see me half sorting and I'm placing the the, the tip of my sword into my opponent's uh, throat. Uh, so this play does work. It did work at full speed in a cut and thrust tournament uh, and it worked very well. I'm very happy with it. Uh, and I have used this picture on my my Facebook banner for years because I think it is so cool. And I titled it Fiori Works. Well, that completes my my quick overview of uh, a variety of uh, Fiori sword techniques that might apply to SCA. And I'll now give you a bibliography and uh, some information on finding more. So the bibliography, the first first uh, books here are copies of the manual itself. Uh, the first one is a facsimile of the uh, Getty copy of the manual with the original Italian, handwritten Italian in it. Uh, I think it's really cool to be able to see and hold in your hands um, a reproduction of uh, the real manual. Um, and then the second one is the uh, Colin Hatcher, uh, Tracy Mello, uh, version of the manual that I used uh, for the translation. Uh, they have uh, reproduced the manual as if it were uh, written in English. So they've uh, removed the handwritten Italian and replaced it with a, a italics typewritten English. Uh, and then the, the bottom two are from Freelance Academy Press. Uh, and they have a, both a facsimile of the original page with Italian. And then on the facing page, a typewritten version of the Italian and then a typewritten English translation uh, by a different person. So uh, you get a slightly different translation than uh, the Colin Hatcher, which is good for comparison and uh, learning. Um, and uh, they have published both the Getty and the Florius uh, versions of the manual. And those books uh, are a little more pricey, but they also include some background and some other materials. And uh, I think they're well worth it. Um, there are also a lot of interpretations out there where they, they show you a plate and then they show photographs of people performing the actions and describe it. Uh, we really like Bob Charette's uh, book, uh, Armzari. Uh, we used that very uh, for a long time early when we were uh, learning the system. And then more recently, uh, Guy Windsor has published a series with on uh, different sections of the manual and uh, a more even more recent uh, longsword technique manual. For more Fiori, our website is uh, learnfiori.org. We have a YouTube channel, which is probably where you're watching this, uh, at uh, that's accessed by uh, youtube.com slash at learnfiori. Please like and subscribe, follow us, uh, so that uh, you can see more videos as we come up with them. Thank you, and we'll see you later.